There we go. All right, cool, cool, cool. There we go. Howdy, howdy. All right, let me go back. Uh, howdy, howdy. How's it going? Doing great. All right, I'm ready for another engaging yeah. and productive discussion on electoral strategy. Like the one you had with Nico House. I don't know. Are you um, broadcasting the video feed too? Uh, I'm about to be. Yeah, it takes me a okay. second to set it up. I gotta, I gotta crop the the input. Looking good, man. Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. I'm yeah. I just don't want the like the background I'll be all yeah bed and house looking. All right, there we go. Gotcha. All right, here I'm. I'm cropping. There we go. Um. Yeah, you saw you saw the Nico House debate, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. My name's Anthony, by the way. Um, yeah, I gotcha. saw that. I saw that debate. All right, nice to, nice to talk to you. Yeah, um, likewise. Actually... Sorry, sorry for not talking to you for a while. I I've been trying to limit my. I, I know you're not like a, a full burner or buster. Um, I've been trying to no. limit my engagement on this discussion for a while right. because I find that every time I talk about it, all I end up doing is making other people mad, no matter how I present my arguments. But um, okay. But you, you've only ever been reasonable in DMs, so I'm actually happy to talk about this with you. Um, all right. This is up. This is up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's, um, I think that's like kind of actually like, you know, no segue even needed, because I think that's actually part of the issue. Wait, I can't see you um, just like... Oh, I don't have two camera outputs. I'm afraid I can't broadcast mine to, uh, to Discord. Oh, okay, cool. You're good. You're good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I think that's kind of part of the issue is that the conversation is typically, you know, um, framed in this, like, in the, okay, kind of like most conversations within super partisan American politics, right? We have one side and then we have the other one. And so even though this is like a left wing issue, we still have like this kind of like partisan ish behavior of like staunch, uh, tribalism, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, so yeah, that, that's why I think, um, because, like, in other words, what I'm saying is Bernie or Bust isn't, uh, you know, exactly isn't my position. And so I think for a lot of people, Bernie or Bust isn't their, like, exact position. And so framing the conversation is always like, oh, either you're Bernie or Bust or, like, or not, or blue no matter who. That, um, that cuts those people out of the conversation. So what are and you? Me? So, yeah, I, um, so, um, to, like, and give you an idea of, like, where, how I came to my electoral approach approach um i yeah i could reference um professor eddie glaude who is a professor i believe at princeton or cornell one of the two and um and cornell west as well and uh nina turner and like a lot of people who are affiliated if you've heard of the movement for a people's party there's there's a few people a few academics that um have talked about like this strategy in particular and where i originally got it from is between that um a debate between the professor that I just mentioned, Eddie Glaude, and uh, Michael Eric Dyson. I'm not sure if you're familiar with, with uh, him either, but there was a debate on Democracy Now! Uh, from the 2016 election where the same issue was, you know, was like, like a question. It was, you know, oh, do we vote for Hillary or, you know, what do we do? And, um, and yeah, it's, it's an interesting conversation within the black population in particular because of the history of the lesser of two evils, like particularly with African Americans. Um, you know, I mean, as you're aware of Oh, and sorry if you're trying to jump in, I can't see you, so I'm I'm not getting any like visual cues if you're trying no, to say no, no, something. Don't, I'm a very vocal right. guy, don't worry. I'll, okay, I'll cool, cool. screech if I'm uh, if I feel the need to speak. Cool. <laughs> but yeah, jump in anytime. Um uh because the only other thing, you know, next that I would say is that um um oh my god, I'm so sorry, I lost lost my train of thought there. Mm -hmm. Um you were talking about the black population and their unique relationship. Right, with right, right. Exactly. Plan. Yeah. Um, yeah. And another, so Nico House is one, but another YouTuber that is a uh, kind of been a good voice for this, this, this conversation and this argument is Jamal Thomas. He has his own channel as well. Mm -hmm. um, chat, you guys could check him out. I would totally recommend him. I mean, even maybe a conversation between you guys, you know, if you two would be interested, I think that would be. I think that could be productive in like consolidating the left, the bread tube, if you want to call it a uh, kind of media consortium. But um, he gives, he does a good job of giving voice to the argument that the lesser of the two evils, you know, that whole uh, rhetoric within the black population in particular, as a lot of people know, has been kind of the thing for the democratic party since uh, for, for a, a, a while now, since I guess you could say Jim Crow, like post Jim Crow and uh, like the Southern flip and everything, 
And so, so that's why it's like such a, such a, a, a problem and such a, not an easy decision for African Americans in particular to invest themselves in Joe Biden, because we've been, you know, so, uh, so, so reliantly, reliably denied and, and voters, ignored, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, the, and the Democratic establishment can generally count on the black population to vote overwhelmingly in favor of them, especially in recent elections. Right. So I imagine there's oh, a yeah. feeling of like, well, fuck you, you can't, you're not entitled to my vote. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, which exactly. I which I totally get. At least us white people have the the benefit of being considered and treated as swing voters, which means ninety eight percent of the bullshit they talk about during the election season is trying to win over white voters because the Democrats just like they know the black and most latin voters are going to end up are gonna yeah 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 so they don't have to pay any attention to those issues and even right now most of the blm virtue signaling that the dnc establishment is doing is meant for the benefit of progressive whites not of actual black people and the way they yeah. carry it's i mean it, you'd have to like go over it point by point but the way they actually carry these issues and talk about them it's pretty clear they're trying to like alleviate the concerns of like the the kind of like spooked suburban white wine mom white mm -hmm. people while also appealing to the you know the moderate base that cares about black people but doesn't really know how far we need to go with that but it's not really about the black people it's 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 yeah 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 i think um joe biden's that i i'm pretty sure you probably saw that uh the policy that uh the little you know police reform bill that he whatever you want to call it plan that he had released mm -hmm. and and the response was pretty much that you know it's not really enough and all it is is something that's placating um I mean, and this even goes back to see the um, like a good way to make the connection is the for the constant shift to the right. And this is this is another point that Jamal Thomas constantly makes is that this is itself like a part of the problem, like very a, a very like crucial part of the problem. The constant shifting to the right by the Democratic Party, which has them more or less today in the position of like 1980s Republicans and you know, accommodationist politics of like Booker T. Washington and that that type of rhetoric, that type of, you know, um, the lift, I mean, that kind of like just appease appeasement and, you know, accommodating that sort of that sort of politics. Yeah, I mean, I won't, I, I'll never defend the Democratic Party. I think there are some elements right. <laughs> in which the modern Democratic Party is unprecedentedly progressive, but that's mostly because the changing demographic shift with regards to some of these issues, like, say, for example, trans people. Uh, Democrats will talk about, because like Warren, for example, they talked about trans people during the primaries, and obviously that's a fairly mm -hmm. unprecedented thing, but that that probably is more of an indicator of our general historical progression towards acceptance in that respect than it is some right. uniquely progressive right, bent. Yeah. Right, I, like Obama only suddenly became in favor of gay marriage. For like gay rights, nano, yes, the exactly. The nanosecond, yeah, yeah. it ticked 50% yeah. acceptance, like, well, okay, there we go. Yeah, so I don't that, know if yes, that's like yeah. legitimately progressive, but then you go back 100 years and you had... You had Republicans who were like, nah, wait, no, fuck banks, fuck business. Yeah, we're going to break all this shit up. You know, you had Teddy Roosevelt. So in comparison to those people, everyone today is like a fucking Ayn Rand libertarian with their with their economic oh, yeah. policy. Yeah. So, yeah. I think, yeah, I think I think that you hit the nail on the head with that because with, everybody's, you know, so anti-government and everything. Yeah, uh, and much more, uh, the Democrats especially are much more, I think, right-leaning than they typically want to acknowledge. Um and and yes um so let me think i'm trying to think where to shift the conversation to um to get to i guess i mean like oh no, so it's like been, I, it's I, been so pleasant so far i'm enjoying this so much <laughs> this is I, great i mean we can shift. yeah um so with regards to who we're voting for um right i've always so my my position on this has always been really consistent there are a lot of people who misrepresent me who say that i'm hinging on like moving biden left once he's elected i don't give a fuck about biden um I think that Biden, I mean, I think it's fairly inarguable if you just take a look at their policies and their history that on the whole, on average, with maybe some wiggle room in certain departments, Biden would be a better president than Trump, certainly with COVID-19 handling. Uh, when it comes to not openly promoting like neo-Nazis and white supremacists, I think Trump's retweeting them like every day now. I, th I mean, that's a pretty inarguable benefit. Um, but when it comes to like moving the dial of history back in the correct direction, I don't think, mm -hmm. I think like... For for me, it's a decision of like um uh, uh like we're in a we're, we're at the you know we're at the the, the bottommost floor of the Titanic as it's sinking and water's pouring in and we're making the decision whether or not to start plugging up some of the holes with like you know uh utensils and 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 restaurant napkins or whether we just keep letting them pour in. Nothing really solves the issue, but we can at least buy ourselves a couple more years of time to uh 
to, to, to find a more meaningful solution. And that's how I'd like to think about it, at least. I feel you. I, that's, that's interesting. I, like, for me, I see part of the issue is that the conversation is a little bit animo um, you know, an animo there's a little bit of animosity. Um, and so I can't even really entertain that question too much. I find myself adopting the same position as you, assuming that it, that is the case. But I'm I'm actually a little more open to like debate whether or not um, you know how facilitating a neoliberal regime would be towards a socialist movement mm -hmm. because of their you know because of their literal intent and like design of being to sh stamp down any any real movement like we were just talking about excuse me with the Democratic Party currently grafting in the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, but I find myself, like I said, I find myself adopting like the safer safer position of all right. I'm just gonna like assume that you know because we got some we saw some progressive um although although it may have been uh you know virtue signaling under obama we did see some progressive action so all right i'm going to go ahead and assume that we can see some more of that um yeah and i i think so i think the only issue is that the animosity doesn't allow us to like that animosity prevents us from honestly um perceiving the democratic wing of our monopoly of the monopoly on you know in electoral politics mm -hmm. and um and that's because we want to immediately label the right wing fascist not right fascist and the focus is on that term fascist but there are other things like if we want, if we could just be more specific rather than saying fascist let's say anti-democratic okay how anti-democratic are the democrats very very fucking anti-democratic oh, yeah, for we, sure no, right, I would you know, so. I, I would argue less though. I, I if if I may, do you mind if yeah, I do, do you mind if I lay out my argument for the the, sure. the socialist radicalization thing? So sure, sure, sure. there are, there are two big there are two big points I like to argue here. Um, it's generally said amongst lefties that one of the big issues with like a Biden presidency, kind of like with an Obama presidency, is people go to sleep, they get complacent, and what's more, movements get co opted. Uh, which is why for a lot of people, at least early on with BLM, it felt almost like a wing of the Democratic. Um, uh, of the Democratic Party. Uh, after you had, like, Ferguson, for example, and you have the initial uproar, of course, and Obama did, like, nothing whatsoever to meaningfully address the... Uh, um, the, the issue. The, yeah, the issues, the concerns mm -hmm. of these of these protesters. Um, eventually, like, things died down a little bit, as they always do. And I right. think people got very, very complacent. Whereas now, under Trump, the benefit of Trump being a fucking idiot uh, is that he's, he's, ca he's constitutionally incapable of not fanning the flames. Uh, he can't ever just let things die. He can't do what capitalists have done for centuries, which is give sort of a, a token gesture of consolidation, and then eventually the movement becomes incorporated into the system it's fighting against it, and it dies off. That's what, that's, um, we learned about that in university. That's what they did with radical student groups. It used to be the radical student groups would be protesting at the universities, demanding, you know, better pay for X, more diversity Y. But then the universities were like, okay, your, your, your criticisms are so smart. What if we gave you your own student department to criticize the stu university from based on hmm. our funding that you have to argue for at, 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 w from the dean, you know? And then kablamo, instantly you have consolidated this group and it turns into a bunch of, you know, reformist nonsense. Um, what I hope for, though, and what I'm really looking for, is that um, I feel so many liberals in this presidency don't recognize that what we're dealing with is a product of a system in decline rather than just Trump. Um, they say, like, for example, COVID-19, like, oh, you know, Trump's handled so poorly, and he has. Would Hillary Clinton, beholden to the interests of... Um, of uh, uh, insurance companies, you know, who never would have implemented a public option if she had been given the chance, have done significantly better, maybe somewhat better, probably. Yeah. But significantly yeah, I, I better? Yeah, I don't really know. I don't really think so, to be honest. Definitely better, but I don't know what the degree would have been. And what we get is so many of these liberals who were otherwise willing to adopt criticisms of the DNC through Obama's failings, through his unwillingness to actually be the progressive he marketed himself as, Instead, they blame Trump, and that's why his support for Bernie has gone down since 2016. After eight years of Obama, libs were upset, you know, we felt like we deserved more, and they looked towards something more radical. Now, they're not as willing to, because all the issues we're having right now, well, that's not a problem of 
you know, lackadaisy Democrats. That's a problem of the Republicans. And any Democrat, even Biden, could fix that. I'm almost excited, excited that Biden won instead of somebody like Warren. Because if Warren had won, I think she's just progressive enough that she really could have kept motherfuckers quiet. But with Biden, that guy, I think there are... Um, I think that a significant portion of the Democratic base will be very disappointed with how poorly he handles these issues, and they will look towards more radical options as a potential solution. And I've been talking for a while, and I apologize. So, yeah, please. Oh, no, no, you're good. I mean, I th I, I agree 100% with that. And I think you've, uh, you know, brought us perfectly to the point of what exactly that's, that's, I guess the next question is, what exactly do we do with all that potential and that energy and this is where this is like the only point where you and i kind of i guess where i like disagree with your tactic so adopting the phrase blue no matter who is it's in ways like superficial it's just a slogan but at the same time it's also uh forming like people's you know kind of our political approach mm -hmm. and so when when we say blue no matter who we're um we're basically taking the same approach that we've taken for the past decades like since you know Bill Clinton I mean however long you want to go back and um and and starts like and and mark the real shift to the right of the democrats and so so that kind of sets us up for what our idea and like what our our, our processing what our mindset is going forward and so if we have the idea and the focus the harsh focus of oh as long as they're not a fascist a neo fascist republican then they're okay. Then we're going to see more of that shifting to the right. And we're going to kind of see more of that. I mean, it, it leads to a lot. It leads to kind of apologism for the actions of Joe Biden. It leads to ignorance of what his actions actually were in Congress and everything. And his actual his like his, the level of his contribution to our current, the current, um, Mechan like the current pieces of our of our you know cis of our society that we see as problematic and as like fascistic themselves like the police for example yeah. um and so so i think a better approach is to actually give power to those third parties that we that that we you know kind of look to i mean that really are leading the way and like have historically led the way in real uh progress by you know introducing ideas and everything new ideas and providing room for that other that the real um political discourse i guess you say yeah um and there's a really easy way to do that the way that i mentioned to you oh sorry oh no no please go for it you you were you were uh, wrapping up your thought i thought yeah um the way what it boils down to is just voting green or you know, i mean green you know i is what i preach is what i uh what i you know support because the green party their platform is in line with you know my my personal preferences my policy preferences and a lot of radicals would probably feel the same a lot of like really far left-wing people would probably feel the same so voting for the green party or whatever third party if you want something else in states like i mentioned where it's a large gap there's a large uh, margin between the blue and the red you know whoever won the state so if, if the democrats won the state if there's like a 10 percent gap then it's a little safer for some people there to vote green and the whole goal is to give uh get the green party to five percent because that gives them national recognition and down the line that gives them um you know we, we it gives them more more basically more funding and a better opportunity like better chances to get you know people like uh you know like down ballot people like state representatives and local politicians get those people in office in other places where they can really make some change. Yeah, I um. So there, so there are two main points that you made here, and I want to break them down one by one. Uh, the first okay. one, the first one that you made was uh, the the inherent complacency of the phrase "vote blue, no matter who." I think on that, I completely agree with you. Uh, I think this is unfortunately a byproduct of the um, um of how arguments get boiled down. Uh, in, 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 with regards to public discourse. A thing that I've noticed, especially when it comes to election issues, is that uh, nobody actually pays attention to what the fuck I'm saying, uh, and that usually people take away like extremely simple boilerplate, uh, like bumper sticker slogans instead of the actual argument, which is very frustrating for me. Um, but initially, I think, I, I could be misremembering, I don't have a particularly good memory, but I feel like initially I made an effort to try and be a little bit more... Um, a specific or like a little bit more not conciliatory conditional with um with my arguments 
But my concern is, as um, somebody who, I'm not going to swing an election, but a fair number of people listen to me. Um, uh-huh. As somebody who gets listened to by a fair number of people, I worry that if I say, like, um, you know, uh, uh, vote blue no matter who, b- but actually, you know, uh, you can vote green on these states, these right. states are safe to vote green stuff, I feel like that'll get lost and people will be like, oh, I can vote green. I'm in Texas. I can vote green. I'm in Florida. And if even a single person, even if they don't swing the election, I don't have any, you know, illusions as to my relevance here. But even if the, they don't swing the election, they it, it would it would frustrate me immensely if the strategic element of the voting strategy got kind of lost and people just sort of did what they wanted because they yeah. were justifying it sort of post hoc. This is one of the issues I had as well with um, uh, Bernie or Bust. Initially, I thought Bernie or Bust was great as long as you posture it, but then vote Biden in the end, no matter what. That way, right? That's actually also like, yeah, yeah. That's actually also another. Um, sorry to cut you off. Uh, no, no. That's that was another position. Like I was really interested in, in like us coming together as a group and saying, "Hey, look, yo, we're gonna pretend like we're burning a bus, but we're gonna vote for Joe Biden. We're just not gonna say like we're just not gonna be out here saying, yeah, we're voting for Joe Biden when we still have three. That was like four months out, yeah. or if it was still like three months out, but now we're at two. Um, but sorry, yeah, go go. Ahead. No, I no, I completely agree. I think that probably like in a vacuum, that would be like a better strategy because that way you posture a little bit, and then you mm-hmm. get like this last moment, like okay, well the the lefties, you know, they got the concili, the, they got the c- concessions that they got, and in the end, they recognized we have to defeat Trump, and we simultaneously posture and make ourselves relevant electorally, but then we also don't like harm the chances of getting trump reelected, or like we don't right. increase the chances the issue that i found mm-hmm. with that is i don't think it's possible as a public figure to tell people to simultaneously say one thing and believe another i don't think it's possible i think 90 percent no. of the people who hear that are just going to end up being bur- actually bernie or bust or actually vote blue no matter who and very few people are capable of posturing between people are very 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 quick to jump on record. i know yeah yeah that they that they're told to adopt, even if there's something else they're supposed to be believing in. And uh, and it, it disillusioned me a little bit, which is why, and I recognize this, my language has gotten a little bit more punitive with time. Um, the one other thing that I wanted to say, I'm, I'm looking right now, so when was the last time a third party got uh, got federal funding, got 5% of the vote? Oof. It's been a um, while, right? Yeah, I couldn't even tell you. I mean, I know Ralph Nader made his, made his run um and then i mean there's of course the bull moose party right there's them of course but uh, you know because i know right now the greens they aren't even like it's the libertarian party that is like kind of taking the most of the as far as independent parties looks like they're, they're three you know, and a half percent back in 2016 for them okay wow they see yeah and that's that's like to, it goes to show like how close uh you know how close they could be to it yeah the libertarian they, party so it ha- always had a little bit more of a pull. And uh, by the way, I'm very much in favor of right-leaning people voting libertarian. Fuck yeah, pull that shit away from pull that shit away from the Republicans. Yeah, yeah. It, see, it, that's the whole, yeah. that's uh, that's that's what I see as like the most beneficial thing about like this strategy is that it brings in people who aren't, like who are Bernie or Bust or who are just like so fed up with the Democratic Party that they aren't willing to listen to you if you say anything like blue no matter who. And, and an, easy, an easy like catchphrase, you know, to, to slogan it up is blue only if you got to, only if you absolutely got to, to stop the fascists, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just so um, worried about, like, who would actually, like, again, I, I, I'm talking as though I'm, like, an election swinger, and I want to make it perfectly clear that I know I'm not. I just, I worry about, like, who would take well, that message I mean, out responsibly. You, know, you could be, honestly, I mean, like, with, I can tell you here in Michigan, I'm, I'm from Michigan, Um, I ran for, for like, people information more about myself i ran for state representative here um actually against a bernie surrogate um, which was interesting i suppose but um here i can tell you here in michigan uh in particular the difference you know what trump won by was in like literally the thousands of votes so you like you know you might i mean it could be Uh, you don't need to butter my biscuit yeah i mean i'm just saying like you (laughs) never know you really never know bro the um so so here's so okay so another set of concerns here, um have you heard of the um the in the national popular vote interstate compact? I think that uh, CGP Gray no. has done a video on it uh, a little while ago. Thanks. No, is that is that like to, um something to get rid of the electoral college type of? Kind of, yeah. Basically, the plan is is that 
a, there are a bunch of states that have secretly signed oh. an agreement that will activate if enough states sign the agreement that more than 50% oh, of the population be... right ends up um, ends up being affected by it. And the, essentially what they're doing is that once they can sign that pact, um, mm -hmm. they will all pledge their electoral college votes to whoever gets the popular vote. And this is very good in one sense and very bad in another sense. The good sense is that it effectively invalidates the electoral college, which only benefits Republicans. So, you know, fuck that. Right. Uh, and it doesn't help. It doesn't do any of the shit that it says it does. It doesn't help politicians care about small right. states. They only care about swing states. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I could um, go in on the on the electoral college. Yeah, fuck the yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fucking prank you <laughs> videos out there defending that shit now. Um, so that's good. Yeah, the the bad news then is that mm -hmm. if that happens because the popular vote becomes the only thing that matters, there are no longer any safe states or even swing states. Really, it's only the popular vote that matters. And in that point, every vote for a third party, no matter where in the country it's done, is equally damaging uh, to the chances of right. the party who best represents your values who's right. got a better chance i How really many... really worry about third parties in this country you said the name of how many states do you know how many states have signed on to yeah, it? Yeah, let me check. I think they're actually I think they're actually pretty close. Oh my god, they're actually wow. really really close. Here wait, I'm going to show this on stream for a second. I'm going to link it to you as well. Um they, cool, have, cool, cool. they have almost tripped the 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 number right here. Um so they have like California, New York and some other big states. And right now um we have uh, enacted legislation for about a third of electoral college uh uh voters and pending legislation for about 12%, meaning that only one or two more states could conceivably trip the, uh, the total into past a majority. Oh, wow. We're actually really, really close to just getting rid of the electoral college through a loophole. Which is why is it, see this is the shit that like does not receive coverage by no no it's insane this is the, the most influential change to our election policy possibly in centuries and no nobody talks about it I wouldn't know about it if it weren't for the CGP Gray video but it's real it's crazy that's yeah that's wild I'm that's I'm, my mind's a little blown right now man. I mean I didn't know this was going on yeah it might I, be a while before this gets enacted because the yellow bar right here is still pending legislation then even then you know who knows how many of those pass but um if this gets passed unless right. we have ranked choice voting i think third parties will become objectively completely unviable even for like local elections which would be really really but not for local elections i'm sorry just even in um even in a uh, safe states which would be i don't know that's really weird to think about yeah, this would, I mean, this would totally shatter that whole little approach, uh, you know. But I think, I think the benefits, I think it would be worth it, you know, for, um, for like what, what, it, I mean, yeah, because the electoral college, I, I mean, if that happened, we would pretty much kind of probably expect, you know, just a progress, not, not necessarily a progressive, but a democratic, at least president for, you know, who knows how long the next, good while at least mm -hmm. oh when you have a second by the way could you link a social of yours in the chat uh just the mods oh, would yeah. post it alongside your um uh yeah alongside that's what's up uh, appreciate whoa. that was that a white supremacist dog whistle <laughs> oh, on my platform <laughs> no whoops that i gotta i gotta catch that one. i gotta think about that one. whoops Oof. whoops daisy uh <laughs> um yeah, yeah. Anyway, I didn't mean to bring that up as like a future invalidator of the voting in safe states argument. Um, because like, oh no, no, no. I, I totally get you. Yeah, realistically speaking, if you're like voting green in California, the odds of you having an impact on the electoral distribution is is beyond minimal. Pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it it it, it does um, it's just something to keep in mind in the future. I think a, another thing that I'm hoping for, I guess, because right now all of our electoral strategy kind of hinges on the fact that. We have first passed the post. If we get Biden in, I feel like I would trade every other ounce of political capital we have for fighting for ranked choice voting. I think that would be so insanely um, powerful. Uh, even, uh, well, it would also help the Republicans because of the Libertarian Party. But yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be very useful. I think, I mean, I think as long as the progressives and the, the more progressive wing of the Democratic Party continues you know, uh, 
a an appropriate approach to populism i think that it, it would be phenomenal for us because those people that are feeling that message kind of um like the guy that you were talking the candidate for congress that you were talking to yesterday kind of like he was talking about Leo Mamaro, um, the guy with the beard yes. yeah mm-hmm. yeah kind of like he was talking about how the those people they feel that sentiment anyways even though they're a registered republican or whatever it may be they they still feel the message that he's talking about. So I think as long as we like have that message on point, because um because I, I you know I think that's actually one thing that we're gonna have to figure out regardless you know moving forward as far as like how to properly frame our populist message. Gotcha. No, no, yeah, I agree. I think I mean Ed Markey won out over over Kennedy um yesterday. Which I is saw. Pretty, I saw. Obviously, there's there's an incumbent advantage, you know, no matter what. So that would have slanted in Ed's favor. Um. Uh, but um, right. yeah, right. but that's that. Yeah, and Marky no Malarkey. Yeah, but no, that's still really really cool. <laughs> and I think it signals a lot because obviously, you know, um, Pelosi promised to only back incumbent candidates in any like major primary elections. And mm-hmm. then you know, a Kennedy comes along, and Pelosi's like, no, no, the Kennedy dynasty must be preserved. And she and she, you know, she endorsed the Kennedy, and Kennedy loses by a pretty huge margin too. So it shows, I think, I think it, it, it indicates at least a little bit that there's a changing tide in terms of who the Democratic Party is listening to. Pelosi's oh, yeah. endorsement doesn't mean what it used to. No, it's, it's actually detrimental in some cases today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like Hillary's endorsement. Oh, God, like at the DNC when Hillary Clinton oh, endorsed yeah. Biden. Um, who the Jamal, fuck yeah. does that benefit oh, besides oh, Hillary yeah. Clinton? Yeah, that was, yeah, that um, that actually happened twice. There was another candidate, I you you probably heard of maybe Jamal Bowman, the, um I think out of, I think out of New York. He's mm-hmm. a candidate for, uh I think, uh, I think the House. No, I think, yeah, I think the House. I believe the House. He um he got he got an endorsement or excuse me his opponent got an endorsement from HRC mm-hmm. and it just like it spiked I think it was it, no actually it was either Pelosi or HRC it was one of the two but um but afterwards his his you know his uh his donation spiked like crazy saw a peak People that he had like never hate seen HRC and I hope and I hope by the way I don't <laughs> think Pelosi's as bad as HRC when it comes to being like a rotten corrupt piece of shit representation of everything wrong with the DNC I think she's marginally <laughs> better. But I hope that eventually they go down in history kind of together uh, because it's really, Uh, really difficult to understate how much damage they've done to moving the party left. Um, You know, uh, arguably Pelosi's done even worse as, you know, as 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 head of the House. Um, But yeah, it's 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 nice to see them get a little bit of a comeuppance, I guess. Um, Yeah. Okay. Okay. wait, sorry. We're we're, we're trailing hard. Sorry. I am. I am operating off an unbelievably low amount of REM sleep right now. And it's 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 hurting. Um, I actually feel you on that. I'm yeah, I'm (laughs) kind of tired myself. I I didn't get much sleep last night. I um, I there are there are a ton of shit I need to cover, including the fucking Trump interview with uh, Laura Ingram, which is going to take a little while. So um, if okay. it's if it's a okay with you, uh, do you want to hit us with a final meme or with a final argument yeah, or um, and post those fucking socials? Okay. Yeah, I, that's that's actually what I would like. The last thing I'd spend my time talking about is uh, I work with an organization called Detroit Will Breathe, um, and we're kind of fighting we're fighting police brutality in Detroit, and um, we're also like just to plug all the things that I'm working on. Um, we're also working on a Citizens Gazette, kind of like a Citizens newspaper. Um, you guys can check us out called the Motown Gazette on Instagram. Um, we have one post up right now, one interview, but there will be more coming soon. And um, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram or on Twitter. I'll post those. And um, I and the only, I guess, like last thing is uh, like like what Nico House, I believe, was trying to say is that Joe Biden is a crypto fascist, not not with like fascistic tendencies. And so that's why we just need to be aware of that and aware of an honest um, perception and analysis of what the Democratic Party represents and all the things, all the harmful ways that they can be, like the things that they can do to harm us as a movement. Yeah, I don't want to, yeah, if if I could steal man his arguments, and I'll admit I don't have a particularly positive opinion of Nico, so I'm not at all (laughs) inclined to to steal man those arguments. But um, if I were to steal man them, I like, I would would agree that at least in terms of, um, in terms of their capacity to undermine the legitimacy of democracy, to to you know rise popular movements against the progressive left, I'd say the Democrats have a fucking horrible history as well. Uh, right now, it seems really really bad because Trump is orange and bad. 
But if you go back and like look at the trends of like who's responsible for stopping these social movements, who's responsible for mean like supplanting or uh, sometimes even outright opposing the progressive elements of this country, the Democrats and before them the progressive Republicans, they've had a history with that too, a pretty strong one as well. Uh, I guess it's just a matter of like how quickly they're bringing it on, how effectively they are. Um, because even though Trump is a fascist, and I do believe that very firmly, we don't live in a fascist state. We have strong enough civil institutions that we can withstand his behavior. If Trump was a leader of like Russia or something, I think he would just be another tin pot dictator. But he's not. He's here. So, you know, we have a little bit more leeway. Um, and we would with Biden, too. But man, can you can you imagine Hillary Clinton like in charge of North Korea or something? Like, See, what would that's... that look like? <laughs> It's it's interesting. I don't want to like not to like add a whole other tangent to the conversation, but like it's interesting you you hit that point because that's um, actually something I was thinking about mentioning, like how uh, rather than looking at it as, OK, this politician is a fascist. OK, this politician is not a fascist. The reality of it with representative politics is typically that that person themselves is nothing but, you know, a an avatar for whatever. Uh, whatever entities are funding them. Business interests, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right and so, the... Right, and so we could, to be more accurate, we could just look at it as, okay, how many fascistic interests does Joe Biden represent? And probably a good handful, probably quite a few. But how many also, prog like how many progressives also have a lean on him and have his ear? Okay, uh, 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 more than Trump, for sure. So like, that's why we kind of put our, you know, put our uh, coins in that bucket, you know. Yeah, at least at least with the Democrat voters, we can make like a, you know, a, 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 a gesture of, of exactly. yeah, faith for when it comes to progressive stuff. Like at this point, I'm pretty sure Republicans would be I'm pretty sure if we held a vote on reinstituting slavery, we'd get like 20 or 30 percent of the Republican vote. I'm if we had a referendum. Honestly, uh, yeah, yeah, I <laughs> really think so. Honestly, um, I wouldn't the, be surprised. Yeah, I the, be surprised. conservative <laughs> media nowadays is 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 literally just like um non-stop like our country is being taken over by disgusting foreign illegal immigrant invaders and anything anybody who's capable of stopping them must stop them if you have a gun you are the only bastion of it's like whoo an end you to know? western civilization it's constantly an end to civilization everything yeah, yeah it's pretty i i actually i watched some fox news recently i don't my family's always been pretty progressive like How my can wing, you? Oh, i can't even i can't i know i can't i actually can't do it it's insane um, Tucker Carlson is incredibly far right. He's also one of the yeah. more cogent speakers, I'd say. Like he's a fairly intelligent dude. But the yeah. um but like the general disposition of that programming, even though this is the, the largest news show, the, the largest news channel, is I, 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 I like I couldn't even fathom it being this bad like ten years ago, you know? Um but I guess maybe it was. Maybe I, I was just young. I don't, I don't fucking know. The Bush it, administration no, it, was pretty it, it bad. It feels like it probably like I because I can remember under Bush, like my um my parents kicking over like lawn signs, like fuck that guy, and just kind of like the other side as well. And I don't think it was like like I think the the pocket was like there was a, just a smaller pocket of equal bad or like maybe even worse, like just as bad. But that pocket has gotten bigger and like more people are more brazen today. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, even back when Obama was elected, remember that. I think there was a there was some Republican congressman who was like sharing like watermelon memes or something like that, you know. And there were oh, there were yeah. the guys yeah. who, who would like not denounce the people who were um doing the little like Obama lynching effigies, you know. So I don't know, man. Maybe it's just, maybe we're all just getting louder. Anyway, um, anyway, uh, f uh, fuck those guys. I really really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for starting my sleep deprived day with a very positive conversation. Great conversation. Thank you for having me on. Uh, pleasure to talk to you, man. And um, yeah, maybe uh, another conversation sometime going forward with because I'm trying to do my own media thing here in Detroit and independent media, I think is very important. I think what you do is also very important uh, for us going forward with this movement. So yeah, hopefully another conversation somewhere down, you know, down the road. Along yeah, the for lines. sure, man. Friend me on Discord. We'll, we'll talk more in the future in case, I don't know, you Bet. post hot memes in Discord and you get banned or something. We gotta, gotta have that backup. Uh, <laughs> hey, have cool, a good cool. one, okay? You too, man. All right, bye.